Hey, this is Eric from Stone Temple Pilots, and we're here to talk about GMS drums. Uh, I first discovered the brand from Mark Zonder in uh, Los Angeles when we were uh, writing the first record, Core. Uh, the rehearsal place uh, was owned by, by Mark, and he had GMS drums, and they just sounded absolutely amazing. This is probably one of your earliest endorses, right? So then, as the tour went on, uh, went back east, uh, when we were in New York, that's when I met Rob and Tony, and uh, we started a relationship back then, I think it was late 1992 or early 1993. And then uh, when we uh, were lucky enough to play Saturday Night Live in 1993, uh, you guys brought down the first kit, it just sounded absolutely amazing. I was playing a Yamaha uh, Rock Tour Custom up to that point. And when we hooked up the GMS for the, the TV show, it was instantly was a noticeable difference. It was just so much better, so much more tall and so much fuller. And the show was a success. So, and I'm sure everyone's heard of Saturday Night Live and probably because of that drum kit. <laughs> My big enjoyment of the company was the fact that it never was that big. Some companies just become such global uh, businesses that they just lose the art of the actual creation of their product. It becomes more about making money than it is about developing and creating really wonderful products and GMS has just always been on top of that game and everything that I've ever heard from you guys has always been absolutely fantastic. The typical setup I use for live and on the road is uh, just a five-piece setup, two toms on front. I mean a six-piece, sorry. Uh, two toms up top, uh, two floor toms and a kick and snare. Uh, try not to keep it too busy, especially what we're doing right now is uh, we're not endorsing a record right now. So we're just pretty much playing the, uh, the radio hits from over the years. And most of those songs don't have a lot of busy parts or a lot of different uh, overdubs and such like the deeper album cuts would usually have. Um, so with that, I keep it pretty simple, but as far as when we're in the studio, it's just every song is completely different. You just use everything that's available and set it up for different songs. It just depends on what the song calls for. Some songs are really simple, like uh, a song like Vaseline, which is just kick, snare, hat, and one cymbal. And some songs I'll end up doing like a you know, four part, five part drum kind of symphony. Just layers and layers and layers of percussion and toms with mallets, toms with sticks, you know. And uh, it just all depends on the song and, and what we're reaching for at the time. As a band, when we uh, are rehearsing the song, it's usually with a pretty simple drum setup, kind of like what we use live. But we start talking and start taking down notes of, of ideas that we have. You know, everything from different guitars to keyboards orchestration and then with the drums as well percussion so it's just uh, you just kind of write down the notes and then when it gets to that day to record that song you start grabbing everything and you can set up a whole drum kit with congas for toms you know depending on uh, what, like I said what the song calls for I've had a, a 70s black beauty for the last 10 years and then uh, when Rob sent out the new the new snare was just absolutely unbelievable. The, the ghost strokes were just so much more pronounced than what the Black Beauty was putting out. And uh, Sound Man and even you know so many people that come to see our show is like, is that a new snare? It sounds different. I can't believe people in the audience can actually hear the difference. You know, all the uh, the drum fanatics out there, and uh, it just sounds amazing. And and uh, you just sent me another one for uh, Los Angeles when we did that show, and that one was just unbelievable as well. Just the volume the tone and just the amount of different sounds you can get out of it just really makes it exciting because since like I said when we do the studio stuff we use everything available just for what that song calls for and, and sometimes I'll even do different drum kits within the same song one for the verses and one for the choruses so to find the right snare drum is really difficult because it has to be able to play from really soft acoustic type songs to songs like Dead and Bloated which just have this incredible overtone and rings to it. I've always used a 24. Um, 22s have a really pronounced sound, but it's just the actual tone of it and the, the note of it 
really wasn't always enjoyable for me, with, uh, especially with Robert and his bass tone. He's got quite a distorted bass tone with really clean lows. And with the 24, once again, it's the dynamics you get out of it. You can play it really softly and sometimes put a baffle on it. Or I like to have it just absolutely wide open, which really gives it a lot of breath and a lot of room for each of the notes. And a lot of our songs are uh, pretty mid-tempo stuff, and the 24 seems to fit in really well. The depth of it, I believe, is the 14. And uh, to go any deeper, once again, it's going to change the note of the drum. And uh, most of our songs are in E and some tuned down to D. But uh, it fits in really well with, uh, with the tunings that we do, the songs that we do. If anything, we'll be making a new record at the end of this year and early next year. Hopefully that all uh, comes really smooth and, and we jump on that early next year.